Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. The Asset Store is full of awesome tools and assets to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video I'll check out some highlights for April 24. This one is the list of paid systems and tools. In the last video I already covered all the best free new assets, and next one I'll be covering top visuals and effects. As always, there's a link to the asset in the description, and as a bonus you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your earn. Also, the spring sale on the Asset Store is still going strong. There's a ton of the top assets on sale. Pretty much all the ones that I covered in my asset review series are currently discounted. So for example, I highly recommend Feel. This is an excellent tool for helping you polish your game. I can highly recommend the ASAR Pathfinding Project. This one is absolutely perfect if you need any kind of extreme pathfinding and make it insanely fast. Odin Inspector is always great for building tools. Easy Save is great for saving any kind of data. And tons of visuals from Cynthia and all kinds of publishers. Those are always great to pretty much build any game. Also remember to check the flash deals. These are up to 70% off. You can see which ones are active right now, and you can see which ones are going to be active in the future. So definitely browse this page and see if anything you need is going to be on a really deep discount in time in the future. And if so, then come back to it and make sure you pick it up on the super deep discount. Also, I'm finishing up building the interactive exercises for all of the advanced lectures for my C-Sharp course. So if you have the premium version, stay tuned for that. And in case you don't know, both the beginner and the intermediate, all of the video lectures for both those sections, those are already available for free over here on YouTube. All right, so starting off with an interesting prefab asset named Blackbox. This is a very unique tool for essentially handling prefab encapsulation. Like the name implies, it lets you turn a prefab into a black box, meaning it hides the complexity of the prefab when you attach this script onto it. I've always said how writing good clean code is all about minimizing complexity, and the best way to minimize complexity is simply information hiding, meaning you only expose the things that you absolutely want to expose and you make everything else private. And this one seems to apply that exact same concept but to prefabs in the editor. It limits how much you can see in the prefab object, which in turn helps minimize potential errors by modifying overrides that you really should not have modified. And if you do want to expose individual properties, like some kind of speed field or the mesh field, if so, you can expose those individually. So those fields are exposed while everything else stays hidden. Again, just like in code, how you want to make everything private except for a handful of things you want public. So this is really a very unique idea, definitely one of the most interesting tools I've seen in months. Especially if you're working in a team, I can imagine this will be really useful for helping avoid all kinds of strange errors. Next, if you'd like to make a city, here is a great system to help you out. It's called Dots Traffic City, and like the name implies, it's using dots to make it extremely performant. You can simulate thousands of vehicles and pedestrians, even on a mobile device. You can define crossroads yourself, define how the cars can turn, and where exactly can the pedestrians cross. You can add some parking space, you can add some block lanes, check for intersections, make some buzz routes, and so on. There's really quite a lot of logic involved in this asset. With just this, you could definitely generate a fully functioning city. It also even includes a vehicle controller with controllable physics, so you can define the city and then drive around it. If you'd like to make some kind of traffic management game, or maybe a bus transport game like Cities in Motion, or really if you just need a complex lived-in city for some kind of game idea, if so, then this one would be a great start. Next, if you want to visualize bones, then check out Bone Assistant. This is a tool to help you handle bones directly inside of Unity. One of the main limitations of Unity is how you cannot create or edit humanoid animations by default, it just doesn't work. Or rather you can, but it's in a very strange way. So this asset helps make that much simpler. You can, first of all, just display all the bones and make them visible. Then you can easily select them with a single click. That alone really helps you treat your characters kind of like puppets. And then you can either create a humanoid animation from scratch or just edit an existing one. So it's a simple tool that is pretty cheap and can be quite useful. Then on the other hand, for a really complex tool, here is Noah Debugger. This is a very complex tool with tons of capabilities. It's basically a bunch of tabs with tons of info that you can see directly inside of your game's builds, meaning you don't just see all the stats in the editor, but rather in the build itself. It's always very important to actually profile your final build as opposed to just profiling the editor. Like for example, usually reading the logs or opening the profiler in a build, doing that is actually quite tricky. Whereas with this, you just import the assets into your project and it works right away. You can see a profiler showing all these stats, you can read the console logs, you can explore the hierarchy, again, all of this while in a build, or just have a tab with some custom info. You can do all that, or define some commands that you can then run in your build. So this looks like an extremely capable tool, made even more useful by how easy it is to implement. You just import it and that's it, you already have a super useful debugging tool for your builds. And of course, if you want, you can then dive deeper with some custom commands and custom info. So if you have issues with your builds, if you want to get some more info out of them, if so, then definitely check this one out. Next, here's a fun, simple one. It's a tool for displaying 3D objects in your UI. I actually covered how to do exactly this in a previous tutorial, but if you just want a tool that does it and does it very well, then this looks really great. 
You just attach the image script, then drag a 3D model, and that's really it. You can now view it in your UI in real time. Then you can easily modify the camera position, the rotation, and all of those settings to get the exact view you want. And of course, since this is actually a view of a 3D object, you can animate and move that 3D object in any way you want. So this is a great, very simple way to make your UI more dynamic by having a handful of animated 3D elements to make it really stand out. Or for another fun visual, here are some god rays. This is an effect that always massively improves the look of any game, adding some volumetric lights. Although technically, this one is actually not volumetric, this one is just a post-processing effect, meaning that the lights actually don't have a shape in the 3D world, it just looks that way. But based on the video, the results are really excellent. Everything looks really good, seeing all the lights passing through all the trees, all the clouds and so on. This one supports unlimited lights, so you can really add as many as you want, and it works in both 3D and 2D. So if you want to massively improve how good your game looks, then definitely just get an asset like this one. The difference really is night and day. Next, here's an interesting one to let you make meshes, but using visual nodes. I've heard that Blender has a tool kind of like this one, and some people quite like it. Basically, it allows you to make some very varied meshes by just modifying some parameters. So for example, you start with a primitive, kind of like a cube, then you apply an array node in order to make it into multiple cubes, then a merge node to merge it with the sphere, then you can scale, move, rotate it in any way you want to get some really strange results. I could see this being especially useful for making VFX meshes, where usually you want some strange shapes for your particles to follow. Doing modeling using logic like this instead of manually modifying shapes, that is a really interesting way to do 3D modeling. I wonder if this method would be easier for someone like me, since I'm a programmer and really not an artist. Then if you have a VR or AR application where you have some kind of controller input, check out this one. It helps you smooth out the raw data you get from those devices. This one apparently uses a state-of-the-art filtering algorithm. It's got a strange name. It's apparently called One Euro Filter Algorithm. You can read the paper for the algorithm if you want. Basically, this tool can help you smooth out values. So you can smooth out floats, vector 2, 3, 4s, as well as quaternions. So if your VR game is looking a little bit jittery, then perhaps a tool like this one can do the trick. Next up, here's a tool that lets you take your inspector to the next level. It basically lets you see literally all the data attached to one component or one entire game object. You can view the data that is hidden by default, all organized in a nice tree to see where that data exists. You can also view as that data changes in real time. You can track some specific fields and specific components and view them all at once, or track when changes are made and throw a pop-up. So this is kind of like a code debugger, but for your data. It's certainly a very niche, very unique tool. It also even has a really complex looking API, so you can work with it in any way you want. Then here's a simple one, it's a polygon cutter. It does exactly what you expect, it helps you cut down polygons, so you can slice any sprite, or you can also draw them, so you can draw the shapes and it converts into an actual polygon. You can make some ropes or make some chains, they work alongside with physics, and you can then cut them down. So if you want to make a game kind of like Fruit Ninja or cut the rope, then this is really all you need. Alright, so those are my top 10 new tools and systems on the UNT Asset Store for April 24. There's links to all in the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.